Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Liquor Sipper where we keep it 100 proof at all times. Today we will be doing a classic review of a Maker's Mark, but not any Maker's Mark. Today we'll be doing a review over Maker's Mark cask strength. Cask strength. So, does this particular Maker's Mark meet the mark or does it fall short? Let's find out. All right guys, thanks for joining me today as we will be doing um, one of the infamous or famous, however you look at it, this bottle of cask strength. Uh, this bottle here is classified as a straight bourbon whiskey. The company comes from Beam Centauri. Distillery is Maker's Mark itself. Uh, this is a ongoing release um, and this is a little bit different than your typical Maker's and also a little bit different than your Maker's 46 as well as a different Maker's Mark 46 French Oaked. This is supposed to be uh, one of the uh, top tier, or some people have claimed that e regardless of the price point of where you can get it at, which is roughly 55 bucks, um, this could be considered a top shelf whiskey that is produced by uh, Maker's Mark. Now this mash bill comes in here at 70% corn, 16% wheat, and 14% malted barley. All right, so Maker's Mark itself is not one of my favorites. Um, this, so that's giving you guys a heads up as to where I stand with Maker's. Do I think it's terrible? No. Do I think it's the best? No. I don't even, for me personally, I, I'm just kind of like down the middle of the road about this thing, uh, personally. Now, how do I feel about this particular bottle? I don't know yet as I have never done a review nor have I ever tasted a specific cask strength. I went kind of um, right past it um, and just went straight to the, the Maker's 46 um, aside from having the regular Maker's. Um, in typical Maker's fashion, you have the top that is literally hand wax as they hand dip these guys straight in and they do this themselves so it's the natural flow of the wax that overcoats the top of uh, of this whiskey bottle itself which is a very distinguished bottle so everyone knows whenever they're looking at a uh, maker's bottle that they're looking in fact at a maker's bottle without further ado let's go ahead let's put this thing to the test to find out is it really worth the 55 dollars that we purchase or if it's just just a you know a normal typical run of the mill which is kind of um what i've gathered from this personal from this whiskey myself like um i guess we're gonna find out so you know the other day we did a review over the kicking chicken, otherwise known as, AKA the fighting cock. And uh, you have to realize that that was such a um, low price. I didn't expect to get what I got from it. So if I don't get a $55 value from this bottle, I'm gonna be highly disappointed. So let's see how it measures up, let's see. But of course, in my own weird way we have to do everyone's favorite part here nosing for newbies okay so a swish and a swash and a swash of the swooshy a little bit of the twirl for the girls all right so this smells like an unsuccessful only fan sex basement I also get weird sense of an old airplane seat cushion and also is that could that be could that be Two old people fucking. But I also get a weird scent of the late 1980s, early 90s of the inside of Dwayne The Rock Johnson's fanny pack. You know, the picture where he's wearing that black turtleneck thing where he looks like a huge giant penis that's been, well, that hasn't been circumcised. It also smells like a drug addict smorgasbord. Any takers? Anybody? Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today for the real nose. We're bringing this cask strength whiskey together with this 
Glen Karen Glass in Holy Matrimony. Okay, let's get to the real nose. So the real nose is actually kind of, uh, it's more surprising to me on how alcoholic it actually smells. Are you an alcoholic? Because my glass is full. Um, there's a little bit of the burn that's in there. It's uh, It kind of overshadows the entire nose um, as far as like the actual sense that I get from it because I really just smell um, a lot of heavy cinnamon on this. There's a little bit of cherry in there, um, and I'm not getting a lot on this other than the heavy uh, saturation of alcohol. Like my nose hairs feel like they're gonna get drunk and fall out. All right, but so the, I guess the true test is just to see how does this thing really fucking taste? Okay, so that slight cherry that was there is definitely there now. So this, I'm waiting for something else. So all I taste is like a, like a decent spice, some stronger cinnamon, but it's very, um, it's very, so back to the saturated, I guess. It's very saturated with this taste of cherry. The cherry is heavy on this, which I cannot knock. Um, I don't get really any berries of any kind. The snozzberries taste like snozzberries, but the cherry, boy, you can taste the cherry. So that leads me into why it smelled like two old people fucking, I guess, because, you know, Old people, they always seem to love cherries, but then again, so do skanks. That's why they can always take the little stem off the cherry and tie it in a knot, because, well, guy or girl, we all know what that's good for. At the end of the day, it's $55. I don't know, I'm having a tough time with the whole $55 thing after paying $18.99, which actually I saw today uh, for that fighting cock was $16.99 at a local store here in Albuquer Albuquerque. So, um, it's a little bit stranger things if you ask me. What's really strange to me is how the elements of a it's almost like a subtle fireball with a heightened uh, cherry coke on top of that. Or just a cherry flavor in general for me personally. There's not a lot of anything else. The burn is not too high. And you gotta consider this as well. This is 110 proof and uh, I mean it says right here on the ball. And 55% alcohol. And for me, um, personally does not come across as a 110 proof. It goes down as if it was 100 proof. So it's a lot smoother than you would anticipate from 110 proof. Um, again, the cherry is very captivating on this particular bottle. So if you guys and gals are into cherry, then uh, this may be a really good bottle for you as it, it's a very, um, um, it's very saturated with that cherry, and I think if you if you are a person that really enjoys doing the whole mixing thing, then maybe mixing it with like a cherry Dr Pepper, cherry Coke, um, or like maybe even making like a cherry icy and dropping you know a cup like maybe a shot into this with it just for a good mix. I think that might be nice and refreshing. Um, but other than that, personally. Um, it's not bad. Is it worth $55? I think it's worth $40. Uh, it's hard to say, man. It's, you know, the more, um, the more you get into this whole whiskey game, the more, um, your, your taste buds become matured 
and your taste buds change over time as to what tastes good and what doesn't taste as good. And then also that, what can you taste more of as you become more, I guess, enlightened with all the different types of bourbons and whiskeys that you start to taste, you start tasting different things. Um, again, there are supposedly hints of vanilla in this. I personally do not taste vanillas. Let me know in the comments, did you taste vanillas in this? Because everything on this to me is fucking cherry and cinnamon. Anyway, this is my honest opinion. Is this the best Maker's Mark? Eh. Is it the worst Maker's Mark? No, because it has a little bit more body to it uh, than I think the 46 does. If you're looking for the heavier oak type stuff, then maybe the... Um, the Maker's 46 might be your jam, um, but if you like the sweeter notes of things and you like the cherry, then maybe this will be your cherry jam, if you know what I mean. Um, other than that, that's all I got for you guys. I appreciate you dropping in and uh, checking out the channel. If you don't mind, tell your friends, tell your homies, tell your enemies, and tell everyone in between about Mr. Liquor Sipper and how we're trying to change the game because there's a lot of people out there that like to sip their whiskey with their pinkies up. But here on this channel, since we like to keep it 100 proof, we sip with our middle fingers up because we don't give a fuck. Until next time, cheers and keep on sipping.